So the first thing I got to do to start getting this Dodge ready for winter and plowing duties is to add a little bit of extra weight to the back of the truck so that I can have some good traction when I'm uh, plowing snow. So I built these boxes. These are just wooden boxes. Uh, probably 10 years ago, and they've actually held up pretty good. Um, I leave them outside all year. I probably should bring them in. But uh, as you can see, I'm doing a little bit of R&R &R on the old things. So let me just explain real quick. This portion, the brown portion of the box, I built back when I was in high school. Now, they, this and this, these boxes used to be in my half-ton Dodge 1500 um, two-wheel drive. And I used that for winter weight just so I could get around without having a four-wheel drive, obviously. You needed some extra weight. When I got the plow truck, I added this portion just to add extra capacity to these boxes because I needed extra weight for my Dodge three-quarter ton, which is my plow truck. This adds quite a bit of extra weight to these boxes. So what I do, I fill these weight boxes with gravel, inch minus. Between the two of these boxes, it holds about well, roughly half a yard, which is almost a thousand pounds. And that adds quite a bit of weight to the truck and that kind of helps offset the plow. And this contraption, this goes up against the headboard of the bed and that stops these boxes from sliding forward into the back of the truck. I'll show you guys all that and how they're set up and everything, but I'm just getting a little bit of paint on these things because they are quite thirsty. This is plywood, and this is some old, I believe that's some old pine or maybe some poplar or something I had at the time. Plywood, nothing special, but it needs some paint. So someone had given me a gallon of this Kills. That's oil-based. And also, just to use up some old paint, I had some... Uh, some black Pettit Marine bottom paint. Now the kills and the Pettit Marine are both oil based. So they actually blended together pretty good. And I made this like battleship gray. I actually really like that. That's going to look nice. Have them both match for the first time in years. It'll look nice. So here you can see what's uh, going on with the weight boxes. Out front I built this brace so that uh, whenever I hit the brakes real hard or I hit the snowbank, the weight boxes won't come forward. Essentially all I do is just drive these GRKs. Into the boxes and that at least keeps them secure so they won't move around too, too much. As you saw when I when I put the boxes in, they're really tight against the fender wells on either side. So that makes a really nice fit so they don't slide. So these ropes here are gonna keep the weight boxes from sliding rearward. Now, I like to use ropes because they do stretch a little bit. And also you can get these ropes. Pretty darn tight. An old timer taught me that trick years ago. And I uh, just wanted to show off this back rack. I built this back rack probably whenever I was uh, I don't know, 17, 18. I used a bunch of recycled steel to make it. I think it turned out pretty good. There's part of a bed frame under here with a lights bolt. A lot of this square tubing I had left over from projects. I didn't have a piece of channel iron or a piece of angle iron wide enough, so I took and cut a piece and welded it together. That served me good for a long time. And as you can see, I used old 3.8 steel that I had. It's been a nice little rack. 
And this bad boy, 374. That's a pretty cool light. I believe that's a signal stat. I like the old school rotary beacons. So yes, this looks weird, but there is a reason behind doing this. So whenever I go down to get my gravel, typically <laughs> they don't just have like these little loaders, you know, that they load your truck with. Usually they're loading triaxles and big, you know, tandem axle dump trucks. So a lot of material usually goes up front here and surrounds these boxes. So I found that if I make these little shields here, I can shovel around the gravel and it stays in the box whenever I get back here I can undo all this nonsense and put the tops on the boxes and that'll be nice and dry all winter long I'll show you how it works So we made it back. I had to shovel all the tailing off of here, but other than that, there's really no cleanup necessary. So that all that extra work to build these wooden, basically a funnel that paid off. And I'm just putting these supports here so that the box doesn't spread. So I got all the braces on there. So now I can put basically the piece of plywood directly on top of those braces and just a few screws and that'll be uh, sealed up and basically ready for winter. Just a little extra, just in case water decides to get in there. But otherwise, there it is. All ready to go. I just wanted to clarify a few things about the weight that I put in the back of this truck. So this is roughly half a yard of material and uh, weighs probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand pounds. Um, obviously the boxes are quite tall, so I really can't haul anything with this thing. Um, I don't use this truck for anything other than plowing snow in the wintertime. Um, we've got multiple vehicles around here, and if I need to haul anything with a pickup, I've got options. I've got other pickups with empty beds that don't have any weight. Um, so I don't mind setting up these weight boxes. It takes a little bit of time, but it makes such a big difference when you're out plowing snow. And obviously, you can see here that the weight boxes are behind the rear axle. I do that so I can get the most advantage out of the weight. Um, that gives you the most bang for your buck whenever you're adding weight to the back of any vehicle. So this thing really is a tank in the snow. I mean, this thing does really good. I pull a lot of people out of the snow if they get stuck and uh, <laughs> I try not to get stuck myself, but it happens. But that weight makes a big difference uh, and also the snowplow when I put that on the front that's an eight foot fisher 
uh, Minute Mount 1. That thing weighs, you know, a good bit. So this weight back here helps the front end from, you know, nose diving whenever you pick up the snow plow. So right now it sits just about level. Obviously when I put the plow on there, it'll dip down. But uh, other than that, the weight is awesome. But it's it's in the way if you wanted to use this thing as a pickup, obviously. So long story short, now we're gonna get the plow on the truck. Well, that doesn't sound very promising. Um, I even had my foot on the clutch to help uh, the engine turn over just a little easier, but I've milked all I can out of these batteries. I traded a stereo for these both of these Optima batteries probably two years ago, so I think I've got my uh, money's worth out of these batteries. So I'll have to replace those. I don't want to get stranded when I'm out plowing snow, and you know this time of the year when it gets real cold, it really brings out the worst in your batteries. So. If you don't have really good batteries, you're gonna be in for a long winter. So let's get these replaced. You know, I can't help but feel like I'm downgrading taking these Optima batteries and replacing them. But when they get a certain age, those batteries are not good anymore. But these ones, I'll probably still use on my old pickup or something like that, something that I'm not relying on every day. I mean, they'll work fine for something like that. They're not completely done. So, this is what I'm using, these die-hard silvers. This one is an 800 cold cranking amp. Uh, this ought to do pretty good. It's got the side terminals, similar to my old uh, Optima batteries. So I should be able to run the accessories like the snow plow and all the relays and everything that I use for the lights. So I've had good luck with these, I'll put her in. darn paint markers. All right, so here you can see the battery terminal for the negative side. Now this bolt is seized up and it just wants to basically round the nut over. So also the thing is, this negative t terminal here, it's loose on the terminal of the battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and cut right here, cut that bolt out, and then I can put a new bolt in and draw that together. I should be able to get that bolt out of here now that I've cut it. And also because I cut through, I can draw that tighter on the terminal of the battery. All right, so there you go. That's how you can fix those battery terminals. See now that bolt, you can actually tighten that up and now the terminal's actually tight. So that's, that's gonna be a really good connection. I use the side terminal for a lot of the extra nonsense that I have under the hood here. You can see I've got some relays I've got a bunch of extra relays for my uh, <laughs> plow lights, backup lights, whatever I've got on the truck. Be my new battery hold down. So as long as I've owned this Dodge, I've never had the correct battery hold down. So I've made this. This is gonna sit over there, and it's gonna use it's gonna use the original nut plates down here. And those are actually those are actually number six by one. And I use the tap and I clean those out, so I should be able to reuse those nut plates. I should have a cool bracket. 
Now, because it's the weekend and I don't want to go run into town, I have a couple of these metric six by 1.0 bolts and I have a bunch of these old lag bolts kicking around. So as you can see, I made a couple bolts for my hold down. So it's a little uh, funky, but you know what? I think that'll work just fine. All right, so there it is. That's nice and secure. That's not going anywhere. So I made this battery hold down too, except that one didn't have the nut plates. I had to basically take this threaded rod and weld the washer on the bottom of the tray. And that works really good. So those batteries, nice and secure. And I'm sure I could probably go on eBay and buy these, but uh, I didn't have to spend anything on this, so that was way to go. All right, so that was long overdue. Got new bolts in these terminals, so now these are nice and tight. I should be getting really good connections between the two batteries. I've got a hold down now, so the battery is nice and secure. And I've also got my side posts with the plow controls, so that battery looks really good. Just replace those batteries. Let's hear how this thing turns over. It's kind of a cold day, so should turn over pretty good still though. Oh, nice. Much better. All right, so along with the weight boxes, I've also got to undercoat my uh, plow truck and also my other daily driver. So use fluid film a lot, but this year I've been trying this no drip. This is that black undercoating. I'm going to see how that holds up. It sprays on with the same fluid film gun that you've always used. So I'm going to get at that today. Got the vehicle up in the air here and uh, the goal is to more or less just hit as many places as you can that are going to be susceptible to rusting. The gas tank straps and brake lines and fuel lines, you know, different things like that. Just kind of go along and uh, coat everything best we can. Obviously it's not going to be perfect, but that uh, undercoating does help, at the very least, give these vehicles a fighting chance against the calcium that we see on the roads. So I'm going to do this Suburban here, and then after that I'm going to do that Dodge. And this is typically something that you got to do once a year. You know, you got to kind of clean off the vehicle underneath best you can. And uh, you got to do that basically once a year. This plow truck too also sees a lot of snow and ice and rain and sleet. And in those conditions, typically the roads <laughs> are hammered with salt. So this one has been done already and we're getting this thing ready for it's another snowy winter. All right, so my gun's all loaded up. I'll show you guys what it takes to undercoat one of these things. Well, all right. I don't know if you can tell from that time lapse, but undercoating a vehicle takes quite a little while. It's quite a process. You know, there's a lot of nooks and crannies where you have to try to get. And uh, to do it properly, I mean, it takes probably a good 45 minutes. I mean, everything kind of has to get covered and you kind of have to try to get inside the frame best you can. And uh, it's tricky. 
especially like up over the fuel tank here. There are a lot of cross members and areas. And you can see like the lighter colored film, like the yellowish. That is the fluid film and the black stuff was that uh, no drip stuff. So. As you can see, it takes, it takes a lot to actually fluid film one of these things and do a proper job. I mean, there are a lot of areas that need attention. Well, anyway, just to wrap this up, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other Dodge. And uh, that's the one that's gonna be the plow truck. So we're gonna finish this up and then I'll bring the Dodge in. I'll do the same thing to that. And uh, we should be ready for winter. I lost the footage of undercoating this, but this was done right after that Suburban. So this truck only got the no drip rust proofing. And as you can see, it kind of makes like a slimy coating that attracts all kinds of dust and dirt, which is fine. Um, I did the rims because these are steel. And as you can see, it doesn't wash off with the snow and the rain. I've got probably five or six good snowstorms under this truck's belt since I've undercoated this. And it, you know, this stuff clings really good and it's still oily, so it doesn't just wash off, which is what I was mostly worried about. So I'd say that's a pretty good product. This is what it looks like probably two months after I undercoated it. All right, so uh, we're finally getting a good old fashioned main snowstorm. And uh, before we get, well, we're supposed to get six to 12 inches. Before we get hammered with snow and I get caught with my pants down, I have got to hook up the snowplow. This is a good old fashioned 30 minute mount, first generation. It's an eight foot fisher. This is actually a pretty good snowplow, but it's uh, time to get it mounted to the truck. So uh, I'll show you guys. It, sometimes it's a pain to get this thing mounted. So what I do in the, in the springtime when I take this off is that I push this, this head ram all the way down so that there's slack here. So that way I can push this ram and move it around. And also I adjust this so that the head gear doesn't fall back whenever you're trying to drive into this thing. so every year this is always kind of a pain but we got these locked in got the plow on seems like two tools you need every year one of these handy jacks and a sledgehammer so should be all set now I got the thing plugged in we'll see how it works hopefully everything goes good because it's been sitting all summer well, it always seems like the first snow of the year is the worst. You're getting all the bugs worked out of things that have been, <laughs> like in this case, this plow's been sitting all summer and now all of a sudden I want to use it. So I had to get this thing in here after I hooked the plow up because what was happening was my fish stick controller, there wasn't any power coming to it. See that? So now, now it's working. So the problem was that this thing the plug that goes the wiring harness from this controller here had come undone behind the dashboard and all it took was just to take the dash panel off and I could get inside there and fix it but just little stuff you know builds up and you don't think about it until you need the snow plow so luckily this was an easy fix now it's 
that's working really good. Now, should be able to use it and uh, exercise it. I just changed the oil in the gearbox last year, like at the end of winter, so I'm not gonna change that. Truck's all serviced and ready to go, so. All right, let's go move some snow. Well guys, we've had our first serious snow of the year, and it's the type of snow that drifts like crazy. You can see the ground is bare right here by the building. But as soon as we walk out here, this is probably 18 inches of snow. Wow. So I got the old truck running. We're going to go move some snow around. I mean, look at these drifts. It's really powdery, light, fluffy snow, so it should plow pretty nice. Let's get after it. Well, sorry guys, this isn't the best video quality, but it's kind of getting dark on me and I'm just trying to get a few uh, paths here cleaned out before the end of the night. It's supposed to, I guess, snow all night long and be windy and blizzard-like conditions, so we're not really going to do too much tonight because in the morning it's all going to blow right back in. I'm just trying to get cleaned out so where I can actually, you know, kind of move this snow is so freaking deep. You know, it's probably the first big snow of the year. It's real light, fluffy, powdery snow. And it packs really nice. But at the same time, once you get trying to drive through it with a car without a plow or anything like that, it really is hard to move around in. Snow just pile right up. That's cool. I don't know if you can see very much back there, but there's some crazy wind going on. Not a lot of people on the roads. That's always a good thing. Kind of whenever you're plowing with a manual, it's a little tricky sometimes, but. Here go the big dogs. Watch them fill in all the snow that I just moved. Ah, I gotta start over. Well guys, believe it or not, this is actually a main highway right now. This is the condition of the roads out here. Pretty darn crappy. But I'm in two wheel drive right now and it's not too bad, but I'll tell you, the snow just comes so fast, the plow trucks can't even keep up with the roads out here. It's pretty unbelievable. You can hear I can get loose pretty easy just by giving it a little throttle, so these roads are pretty slick, but you know, luckily not a lot of cars are out here plugging up the road, you know, because there's a lot of times people get out and they don't have good tires, they don't know how to drive in snow, and they just go way too slow and they kind of affect everybody else negatively on the road that knows what they're doing. And this is the road that I live on and uh, basically looks like we're driving down through the middle of the woods, but it's just snowing so hard. Yeah plows, as soon as they go by, the roads basically pull right back in. Pretty crazy stuff. It's always kind of enjoyable. I always kind of like driving through these roads whenever they're like this. Call me crazy, but I think it's kind of fun. Well, look at that. My front door is all uh, snowed in. I don't know if you can see that or not. We've got quite a bit of snow here. Alright guys, so this is what happened after I plowed last night. You almost can't even tell that I was here. 
We had a good old-fashioned nor'easter, and it dumped probably, well, this is where I stopped shoveling. It dumped probably a good, what we got, 14 inches. So, as you can see, I got a sea of white snow down there. I got to move, so. Also, I got to shovel this down at the lower driveway, so. <laughs> Let's give the truck a while to warm up and get after it. All right, got the upper driveway clear. And this is some snow. Set you guys down here over by the garage. You guys can kind of watch some of the snow being moved. So basically, <laughs> you just keep doing that over and over and over again until the driveway is perfectly clear. 
Man, we got hammered with the snow. I mean, the snow is pretty darn nice and fluffy, so it's easy to plow, but man, it just spills over the edge of the plow. Look at some of these drifts. Unbelievable. I mean, it's up to my knee. A lot of moving around today. It was a mistake putting that lawnmower right there in the way. I could have just plowed that snow right on through. As you go into the pile, you kind of got to lift up the plow as you're going into the thing so that you don't have all that big mountain of snow weighing down on your snow plow. This is kind of fun. I enjoy plowing snow. You know, it gets old if you got five or six of these storms back to back. You know, one or two here and there is actually quite fun. You know, it's, all, it's kind of a cool feeling to have all this snow be buried in. The wet snow is off of the plow. It's just it's really hard on the truck. You get stuck easy. It's like icy at the times. This is nice and fluffy snow too, so it's always enjoyable having this stuff to plow. The really heavy well, check it out guys, so you guys get an idea how deep the snow is. <laughs> we got quite a good drift here too, right in between the house and the garage. The only downfall of having all this big snow is that you get to shovel it. I had to shovel off the deck here as well. All right, and here's driveway number two. The weight that I put in this Dodge really helps out. I don't know if you could do this kind of snow without any sort of ballast in the back of this truck, but I'll tell you, that weight very helpful. And the wind is just a whipping through here today. And this is a little tricky because this is all ice right in here. So that always tight, the truck always likes to spin right there trying to push that snowbank back. There we go. That's pretty much done for this storm. So it's going to wrap up this video.